have his team ready in a really hot building. Florida has been terrific on their home floor. These two teams went to overtime in Tuscaloosa just a couple of weeks ago. There was 85 all at the end of regulation. Estrada was the one who was able to force overtime in that one with an offensive putback. Florida's coming off of a road loss to South Carolina, 82 to 76 on Saturday afternoon. South Carolina, one of a handful of teams still aiming for that regular season title. A contested two-point jumpers off and rebound by Aaron Estrada, who's fouled 93 feet from the basket. Here's a look at the starting five for Alabama. As Nate Oates mentioned, no, Latrell Wrightsell in the starting five, but we expect to see him soon. He's a 45% shooter from deep. Well, he will add to the fact that Alabama is number two in the nation, making 11 and a half three-point shots per game. We know Alabama is the highest scoring team in college basketball, right at 91 points. Nelson kicks it into the corner. Alabama, not just the best scoring team, but also number one in offensive efficiency. Only put up 74 points in Saturday's loss at home to Tennessee. Florida starters have been regulars all season. It's been a consistent lineup. And one of the better players off the bench has been Riley Kugel. Who had a good game this weekend against South Carolina. Scott Golden is looking for more production from him. Mike hand gotten down the lane and he's fouled. Todd Golden has turned around this Florida program in just one season. He's done it by hitting the jackpot in the transfer portal with Zion Poland and Walter Clayton. One of the highest scoring guard duos in the SEC. He's looking for his first win against Bama. Here's Hanlogton. Who, by the way, may be the second most famous marshal to Florida transfer in the building tonight. White chocolate, Jason Williams is yeah, sitting courtside. To our left. And Hanlockton gets to that. There he is. Uh, Hanlockton gets to the free throw line, Tom, because of the offensive rebound that Florida gathered off the first miss. Florida, the third best offensive rebounding team in the nation right now, grabbing 39% of their misses. Here's Estrada with a half step. That was a concern for Todd Golden. Estrada getting downhill. Nelson, no. Estrada keeps it alive. Good feed inside and a bucket in the paint for Jaron Stevenson. If you are Florida, you cannot get attracted to the rim on those three-point shots by Alabama. You have to rebound the elbows first. If this thing turns into a real track meet, who does that favor? It, it favors Alabama. I know Florida's on their home floor, but Alabama, again, the highest scoring team in college basketball. They are fantastic in a track meet. Florida can run a little bit as well, 12th in the country, just a hair under 85 points a game. And it's an Alabama turnover, leads to a Florida runout. Nothing doing at the rim, and it is Alabama basketball. Gators 0 for 4 early. Tom, you mentioned Todd Golden knocked it out of the park in the transfer portal. Two, two key guys. Zion Pullen and Tyree Samuel were recognized before the game. Two selfless guys that truly care about the good for others, and those two dudes can hoop as well. Nice reverse by Nelson, part of the senior night festivities here in Gainesville. You have to make Florida pay for their big gaps, man. They give you big gaps in the lane for your role men to operate off of, and Alabama takes advantage of it early. Tyree Samuel puts it on the floor, trying to go high and low. Rebounded by Will Richard, and Florida gets another possession out of it. Poland looking for a ball screen. Here's Samuel for three. Alabama was content to give Tyree Samuel mid and long range jumpers in the Winnicoma Coliseum two weeks ago. Poked away, another Florida steal. No numbers for the Gators, good transition D. Really good, hot hands, right? By Tyree Samuel, 6'10", like a guard. Clayton with a jump stop is able to draw the whistle on Jaron Stevenson. Tom, here's what I'm talking about. The roll action for Alabama, I think, is going to be there a lot in this game. And Florida, they, they just give you big gaps to operate off of. And the back screen that time, a small and a big, frees Nelson up. Florida has got to tighten up their defense, not only in this game, but going forward. If so... I'm firmly convinced Florida is a Sweet 16 team. Team that's 
Won nine of its last 11, including two in overtime. Clayton knocks the second one down. Talking with Todd Golden shooting around today. He said, listen, yeah, we are by rankings probably 20th to 25th in the country. I get it. We know where we stand, but if we can just tighten up some of these things we're doing wrong, we can be a top 10 caliber program. Alabama couldn't finish the alley-oop. Here's Clayton on the drive, and another whistle goes against Bama. That's another one on Stevenson, I believe. Now, Clayton is such a dynamic scorer. Comes in at 18 points a game, but he has really caught my eye as a physical downhill driver, talking about Clayton, and now Reitzel's going to check in. I would say that this kid is the best three-point shooter that Nate Oates has ever had at Alabama, and, and Nate Oates has said the same thing. Shooting about a 45% clip from that three-point line. And he has been a big miss. Nate made a great point to us today. Their last two games, Alabama, has been the slowest tempo they've had all year because of the lack of guard depth. Finally catches up with Estrada and Sears late in the game. And, well, this is a big bonus for Alabama getting this kid back. Yeah, his point being Estrada and Sears can play 35 minutes a game, but 40 yeah. is too much. It's really pushing it. In fact, Sears played 43 minutes in the overtime matchup with Florida a couple of weeks ago. Kicks it, throws it away, and another turnover. That's the fourth turnover on seven offensive possessions. Um, I like Florida playing drop coverage in this game against Alabama. Why is that? Alabama doesn't want to take those tough twos. They want to take layups or threes. That drop coverage forces you to take some 10 or 12 footers in this game. Sam Walters on the floor. He had four threes in the matchup with Florida earlier. He's a Florida native from down the road in the villages. Clayton directing traffic. Samuel on the roll this time. Back to Clayton. Contested three. And it's rebounded by Estrada. Bama looking for the lead early. Nelson will put it on the deck. He's got great length. But he can't finish at the rim. Bama just two for five with turnover. Samuel! Wow. What a pass. I mean, you talk about full speed to a full speed big running at the rim. That was beautiful. Here's Walters for three. That's off the mark. And it's found by Poland. Poland penetrates, looking for a touch shot, and it's rebounded by Nelson. Now Walters with the spin, hesitating, and finally gets it to go after hanging in the air. He makes Alabama better, talking about Walters, much more than the three-point specialist that he was in November and December. Got some ruggedness about him now as a true freshman. Samuel off the window, no good, and it's rebounded by Nelson. Estrada has yet to score, hadn't put up a shot yet, and now he's looking for Nelson for three. Bama continues to struggle shooting the ball from depth. Walters with the rebound, and we got a jump ball. We'll keep it this direction when we return. How about Florida pushing the tempo a little bit? Yeah, well, two things Todd Golden's going to talk about. First of all, they've got to rebound the elbows defensively and continue to get out and run. Man, appreciate the guts and the effort and the foot speed of Samuel. Beautiful pass on time, perfectly done. Senior night festivities here in Gainesville, and that not only includes stars like Zion Poland and Tyrese Samuel, but also a couple of walk-ons, Jack May, Alex Plachke, and Bennett Anderson, honored before the game today. <laughs> Great memories. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, people didn't know you came out early. <laughs> Boy, Alabama, they throw that ghost screen at you. Almost every possession, they sprint at that ball. If you don't cover it up, they get clean looks. Great feed by Sears and a hard foul for Thomas Houck. Not finish off Tennessee, and now you and I head to Columbia, South Carolina tomorrow night in a massive, massive game between Tennessee and South Carolina that could determine the SEC regular season champion. How about the MVP being the schedule maker? Because yeah. we've got some huge games coming down the wire. Tennessee, by the way, will finish with four straight against top 20 opponents. First time ever. And after going to South Carolina, oh, by the way, then you get Kentucky. 
Two misses at the free throw line. Florida clinging to a one point lead. Highest point total, second highest of the season in college basketball, but haven't lived up to it just yet before that Thomas Houck circus shot. Big time drive by Houck out of the Hordes action. Hordes pop, rip drive, really well done. Sears hasn't found a bucket yet, hasn't taken a shot yet, and gets denied on the interior. Alabama lost the hustle points against Tennessee, and they lost the game against UT. Here's Howe for three, and it's rebounded by Ryan Griffin. Tom, 40 loose balls in the Alabama-Tennessee game, and Alabama only came up with 16 of them, and that's been a big focus for Nate Oates coming to this ball game. Watch this last action by Florida. They start in horns, two guys up high. And they dive a guy out of the horns, and then this is just a rip drive for Hauk, spelled H-A-U-G-H, pronounced Hauk with a K. That's hard driving action by Hauk. I asked him before the game, oh, why is it pronounced Hauk? And he said, I have no idea. I don't know, my parents don't know, my grandparents don't know. We've just always been Hauk. Spelled H-A-U-G-H. He's from New Oxford, Pennsylvania. His dad, Ryan, played football at Shippensburg. His mom was a college volleyball player. He, I'm surprised he didn't just say, listen, I don't know phonetics, I know hoops. That's it. And a foul on the drive will be charged to Mr. Hauk, much to his dismay. Well, he is, no matter how you spell it, Hauk is a hard-playing dude that has fought from day one. I talked to Todd Golden, maybe the third day of practice back in October. He said, I'm telling you, this, this kid's going to get minutes because he's a competitive son of a gun. Is that verbatim quote? Pretty much. Okay. He's got two, and he's still on the floor. Nice and he gets move. beat by the spin from Mohamed Diabate. Diabate has watched a lot of film of Draymond Green over the last month. And his versatility going forward. You can see why they're showing him that film as a small ball playmaker. Wow. Great feed and a big time finish from Condon. It was the vision from Riley Kugel that set it up. That Florida front line is, is young, but they are strong and they are tough and they are skilled. And there's a bunch of them. They run four different guys at you. They're all very good screeners and rugged around the rim. Hauk has his hands full with Estrada, but then Clayton nearly bailed him out. Reitzel picks it to the corner and gets it back. Shot clock at nine. Bowling ball move from Latrell Reitzel for his first bucket in two and a half weeks. Tom, he's more than a three-point specialist, which he is. He had ten rebounds about three weeks ago. He can drive it through contact. Now, where is Alabama's defense early in this game? Just no resistance at all guarding the ball. They average allowing 92 points per game over their nine losses. It's been an issue for Nate Oates all season. Estrada over Howe. I'm a little surprised with two personal fouls and Howe still on the floor with Florida's depth in that front line. Yeah, just I think Todd Golden, though, he's not he's not married to that. You get two fouls, you come straight out. Rebounded by Diabate. Plays about eight minutes a game for Bama. Here's Reitzel from the logo. And a hold on Diabate will be his first. Got a one-point game. Now Florida is establishing this, the rules of the game, Tom, around the rim, pounding that thing inside, driving it to paint touches. A guy like Pullen who absolutely doesn't turn it over with a strong finish. Coach, an extremely aggressive approach offensively. You guys continually go to the rack. What was your message to them that resulted in this? Yeah, you know, we know we thought in our gym we got to be really aggressive, getting the ball inside the paint against these guys, making them pay for playing a little smaller, putting pressure on the rim. The great thing is we haven't really made shots yet, and we got the lead. So once we start banging some, I think we'll be in good shape. Also playing really aggressively on the defensive end, specifically against Mark Sears. They're doing a good job, it looks like. Yeah, we got to stay in his body. Obviously a great player. we got to do everything we can to keep him playing out of his right hand and do a little better job defending him without fouling down the stretch here the rest of the first half. Appreciate it, Coach. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Thank you. Well, you heard Todd tell Marty, keep Mark Sears playing out of his right hand. The reason is when he plays to his left, he's an All-American. When he plays to his right, he's, he's off conference, but that's the difference in his game. What a nice pressure release, kind of that timeout by Todd Golden. 
who has been as good as any coach in this league this year, scoring after timeouts. No doubt about it. Nelson looking to drive, and he's able to get deep but couldn't finish. Like a handlock to back on the floor for Florida. They've gone with Condon inside as well, giving Halk a breather. I like what Todd told his guys today to shoot around. We are at home. Turn it up, man. Let this thing loose and play tonight. Be the aggressor the entire 40 minutes. Back clock at nine. Kugel working on Sears. Nearly turned it over. Condon had to get on the floor for it. It'll be a jump ball in the possession. Keeps it this way. Kansas State, Jimmy, has seven overtime wins. And then they have seven losses by single digits. It's hard to figure them out. Yeah, and what else is hard to figure out? You look at the Big 12 standings. Kansas, 9-7, and seven, tied for fifth. Just uncommon territory for Bill Self's Jayhawks. It's the most losses for them since the year after Danny and the Miracles won the national championship. Larry Brown left. Roy Williams came in. Roy would get it right. And this seems just like a blip on the screen for yeah. Bill Self and company. I mean, we were told that Kansas had the best starting five in college basketball. I, I think UConn would have a lot to say about that. Purdue's starting five is really good. Arizona's starting five is really good. Tennessee's, and that lack of depth right now has really bothered Kansas all year long, especially when McCullough was out for such a long stretch. He just came back the last game. Sears couldn't finish at the rim. as his first shot attempt. It comes nearly 10 minutes in. You've got to make Alabama guards move that ball. Florida so good. They play so fast, Tom. Florida does in the half court. Hard cuts, fast passes. That's when they're at their best. Condon was throwing it in to hand locks, and so no shot on that whistle. And that's the first charge to Aaron Estrada. Think about Micah Handlock in part of that strong front line for Florida. A seven-footer that has an 18.2% offensive rebound rate. That's fourth in the nation right behind Sam Godwin from Oklahoma and Zach Eady for Purdue, who has an 18.3. So he rebounds offensively the same rate as Zach Eady. Bullen lost it. They've been a little sloppy in the last couple of possessions, and another one that's going to get late in the clock. Google can create on his own. He's at three wide, but it's an offensive rebound for Condon and a scrum underneath. Will turn into a Florida foul. And that's the second on Micah Handlocks. And the teams combined 0 for 11 from 3 to start this game. Condon gets the breather. Both Hauk and Handlocks. And pardon me, that second was the second of Kugel. That'll help the front court depth. Is that back screen again by, by Sears. He's such a good screener for a point guard. He's not afraid to give up his body in full screens. Here's now 0 for 2 from the floor. Um, some, some point guards offensively was kind of clippy with their shoulder as a screener. This guy, man, full body screens. Talking about Sears. Good pass. Well, Richard drains the three. He is a key guy for Florida. Shooting about, what, 29% from the three-point line in conference play. And if he gets that 34, 35%, that's a big deal going forward. Estrada with a kiss off the window. He's got four. Bama hanging in there. And a game that's a lot lower scoring than the experts anticipated. Good shooting teams are good passing teams. And that sums up Florida. Look at Tyree Samuel. He's surveying that backside bomb that's available for Will Richard from the first bounce of the ball four and white was finding five and the ball was delivered right in rhythm Richard trying to shoot his way out of a slump was only one for 11 from three coming in over the last couple good spin move from Estrada then the pump fake he finds Pringle and he gets it to drop in a three-point chance for Nick Pringle. I love the game of Nick Pringle right now. He's coming off of a 13.9 rebound slugfest against Tennessee in the loss. But he keeps Alabama, in my opinion, from getting punked at the rim. Talking about 23 in red. He's very good getting his chest into yours. He's a big, explosive athlete. Nate Oates had to set him down for a stretch and get his mind right. But Nick Pringle, to me, changes Alabama in March and keeps them from just getting physically whipped by bigger, stronger teams. 
Three different Gators all have two personal fouls here early. That was the second on handlong team. Pringle with a three-point play, but the Alabama offense slow going in some respects, even though they've tied this thing at 18. Eight for 11 from two, but haven't made a three yet. The average nearly 12 made threes a game, second best in the country. Well, Todd Golden's number tonight is to keep Alabama at 25 three-point attempts or lower. Not easy to do. They average close to 30. Pringle fighting for the rebound, got fouled by Condon. Pringle is the guy that frees up shooters better than anybody else that Nate Oates has. A high IQ kid at that five position. Pringle in the bonus. This is the front end, but Nelson is there for the rebound into Pringle's hands. Stroud on the bench for a moment. And here's Nelson going downhill. Good length of the finger roll for Grant Nelson at 6'11". And how explosive and long and fast was that first big stride with the ball by Nelson. He covered 16 feet just like that. And on a 7-0 run to take a one-point lead. Enzel Aberdeen on the floor for Florida. Shot clock at 8. Hand fighting on the post. Aberdeen forced, forced the hoist and he jammed it. It's only his sixth three of the season. Tom, they, Florida, they absolutely ran no offense on that possession to put Aberdeen in a bad spot. Bracketology with Joe Lenardi has Purdue as the number one seed. What else catches your eye? I think I know where you're going. Well, I just don't agree with Joe's projections and for Arizona to be a one seed right now over Tennessee. And you think about Arizona, 14 and 4 in the Pac-12. It's a two-bid league. A two-bid league in their 14 and 4 as opposed to Tennessee, who's 13 and 3 in a seven or eight bid league. And I give Arizona a slight edge over Tennessee in the non-conference, but from January till now, Tennessee to me is the fourth overall number one seed. Great hustle by Nate Oates, the squad, trying to earn those hard hat blue collar points. Speaking of Tennessee, by the way. See them tomorrow on the road against South Carolina. They can clinch a share with a win against the Gamecocks. South Carolina, though, went on the road and won in Knoxville, one of five teams in college basketball with the top five road win this season. That will be a monster game in the SEC that could determine the regular season champion. And Dalton Connect will have a lot of defensive attention on him, much like Alabama put on him, but Dalton Connect an unselfish guy that em I actually embraced the double team during that game and told Coach Barnes, let him double me. I'll make them pay as a passer. Guys, Nate Oates wants his team to move more. He said, we have to keep the ball moving and you guys got to get moving. Let's move. He wants his guards to get downhill from the elbow. Jimmy, as you know, and kick to the corner for those open corner threes like we just saw Aaron Estrada shoot. He just happened to miss it. And it's a common theme, Marty, because that was Nate's message at shoot around today. He wanted to see more movement, more action. A bit more energy, I think. Yeah, Tom, the Alabama's offense is all predicated on how quick can they get a paint touch. And any time they get a paint touch within the first three seconds of their possession, their points per possession is almost like 1.4. And they, they chart all those things, but you've got to keep Alabama out of the lane at the end of the day. If you guard the ball against Alabama, you guard the three. And that's why Alabama's so dog-determined, man, to drive downhill. Irie Samuel didn't think that should have been charged to him. Nick Pringle went flying after he lowered the shoulder. Well, there's one push-off. You're going to get him on the second push-off. Probably could have called the first one with the extension. And Nate Oates has been on his guys, driving him hard the last three weeks. We've got to toughen up and have more moxie about us on the defensive end. Here's Nelson from behind the line and puts up an air ball, but a save by Bama. Nelson, another chance at it, and he draws the foul. It's the second on Condon. He's the fourth Gator with two personal fouls in the first 14 minutes. 
And those hustle points and yeah. plays are starting to go Bama's way. They are. Alabama right now are only about getting 25% on the offensive glass. And remember, Alabama, third in the country at 39%. If you're Florida, you have to full body chest check out in this game. And if not, Alabama, I mean, it's a team that can just absolutely get after you on the glass. Another one coming for Nelson Sheener from Devils Lake, North Dakota. Started its college career at North Dakota State. Bama has really cleaned it up much more efficient. They haven't turned it over since the 14 minute mark. Florida has pulled even with them in the turnover category. Nothing there from three. Offensive rebound and Condon found himself open. That is where they kill you, talking about Florida. Typically, they get a shot because they don't turn it over and they pound you on the offensive glass. Estrada finds Pringle down the lane. He's denied. Trying to attack that open gap, though, in that Florida defense. Just couldn't finish. Great. Gators, a great shot blocking team, more than five a game. And trying to muscle inside, and Samuel gets it to roll home. Gators now enjoy a four point lead. Great job by Samuel to get his feet underneath his shoulders and not rush it so he could power through the contact. And here we go. Now, Nelson answers. This is what everybody expected with these two great offenses. Clayton working on Nelson. And before the dump off, he gets fouled on the drive. That'll be charged to Nelson, Florida, in the bonus. Now, Florida can get cooking offensively with the best of them out there. That missed three-point shot and just the length of Condon and Hanlockton and Samuels, Hauk, those guys just eat you up on the offensive glass. Look right here, Samuels, he didn't rush it. Tom, had he tried to go up when his feet were outside of his shoulders, probably would have got it blocked, but an older, experienced guy gets his feet under his shoulders first before he leaves the ground. Walter Clayton Jr.'s got another free throw coming. Florida native, he's from Lake Wales High School, then went on the road to play at Iona to start his college career. He was actually recruited by Florida as a wide receiver coming out of high school. He had a lot of SEC offers as a wide receiver. His love was basketball, and now he finds his way back to this Florida campus as a hooper. So he bet on himself when he gave up football to focus on basketball. Yeah. Richard in the right spot, in the run out. Gators have made their last three, open up a six-point lead. Yeah, they've, they've won those 50-50 balls. And this is, again, an area that Alabama struggled against Tennessee coming up with them. And Florida in this building, man, they can really get rocking offensively in a lot of ways. It's not just the guard play. They can obviously knock down the three at a high rate time. They can roll their bigs, are good finishers inside. They can dry the ball. They get fouled. A rough start offensively for Florida, one for 10, but since then, nine out of 14. Very tough team to defend. Meanwhile, on the other side, Alabama just won for its last seven. Crimson Tide still hasn't made a three in this one. 0 for 9. Florida really extending the defense. Yeah. Poland turns it into a turnover. You've got to expect that pressure to be turned up coming out of a timeout. Play like the lane's on fire, open up your offense and back cut it. Alabama that time trying to fight pressure with pressure. Gavin Crosby, number four, on the floor for the first time for Bama tonight. He's been red hot from deep. And it's mixing up his guys on the floor, trying to find an answer. Beautiful spin move, a power finish by Tyree Samuel. How quick is Tyree Samuel? He just absolutely whipped Nelson in the speed category. 6-0 Gators run their largest lead of the game and a hand check out top will be the second personal on Samuel. That'll be something to track in the second half because those fouls are really piling up for the Gators. Tom, as a post player, the wood is your friend. Keep your feet on the ground and use it to your advantage just like Samuel does. He doesn't bounce around. He's a quick spinner because he plays with a really good, fast foundation from the waist down. Well done by four and white. Alabama, I think you go in with the game plan like Todd has. Can they make enough guarded tough twos to beat us? And you snuff out that three-point line and stay attached. 
And it's the number of three-point attempts that you have to be concerned with. Alabama, again, they'll, they'll take 30 or 35 if you let them. And Todd Golden's goal is to keep them under 25, and so far they are well below that number with their defensive game plan. Well, one concern, you see that, as you guys have mentioned, doing a great job defensively from behind the arc, but Florida is fouling a lot. Now the Gators go to the free throw line. South Carolina went to the free throw line 31 times on Saturday. Todd Golden said to us today, he said, I thought at the time we got a bad whistle. Then I went back and watched the film. I thought we've got to be better defensively, and we can be better defensively. Thomas Houck at the free throw line. Tom, I mentioned early that Nate Oates was up till 4 a.m. Sunday morning after a late loss to Tennessee on that game day Saturday. He got about four hours sleep, and you got to remember he's got family responsibilities Sunday morning. They dive right back into preparation for Florida. It is such a grind and very difficult to get yourself ready to go again as a head coach, much less your guys. Crosby found the loose ball and put it in, and then a bump from Pringle. Walter Clayton Jr., ninth in the league at free throw percentage. And got one more comment. Tomorrow we got a bench doubleheader on the SEC network, and it features the second game, including 15th ranked Kentucky at home against Vanderbilt. It's 9 o'clock Eastern on the SEC network. The one coming for Clayton. What a wild ride it's been in Lexington. And now Kentucky primed to go on another deep run with all of their talent. They are one of those teams not on the one or two seed line that can strike fear into you when you see that bracket as a head coach. Stripped, and it will be Florida basketball. I'll say it again, you guard the ball against Alabama, you guard the three. Because it's all triggered off of paint touches and spraying it around. And good hand help that time. Clayton's got eight points in this one, all eight coming from the free throw line. Had to fight through that screen and get around Crosby. And Good the cut. back cut is there and a jam! Florida with a nine-point lead. The first field goal from Walter Clayton, Jr. Bama looking for something. They get it from Estrada. And here's Florida pushing the other direction. To my point about how quickly Florida puts the ball on the defense. They just go right to work. And a pull up from mid range for Will Richard. Gators have made their last six. Crosby gives it up. Nelson loses it. For Alabama, turnover number eight. For Florida, everything's going in. Yeah, that reach down handheld gets a turnover. Here's what I'm talking about. You get this offense lifted high. Everybody's above that free throw line extended, Tom. Just opens up the back end. A little bit of a banana cut by Clayton off ball. Todd Golden, one of the better offensive minds in college basketball. See what he draws up here with 2.15 to play and a half. Poland gets cut off. We'll try it again. Nine on the shot clock now. Guarded by Sam Walters, the freshman. 17 footers, no good. Rebounded by Florida, stripped away by Sears. Under two to play in the half. Walters on the run. Got his own miss. No whistle. It is physical inside. One Push pass. up front. Richard with the jam. Estrada finds Griffin in the corner, and that's the first three of the game for Bama at the 134 mark. Tom, you won't see a better pass than what Poland fired in transition. A very small window, and everyone sprint the floor. Leighton fires again. Whoa! He is red hot now. Sears splits the defenders and gets all the way to the rack for his first field goal of the game. It has a little bit of a peach jam feel to it, it right now. And Even the weather outside. Yeah, that, that's not what Todd Golden wants. He wants his guys to lock in defensively. They're scoring at a high clip. They have got to tighten this thing up against Alabama on the defensive end. Richard out to Poland. Poland is Poland. 
After a slow start, Florida's really turned it up. Sears reverses it in. Alabama turning it into a one-on-one -on -one game, spreading the floor, opening it up in five out, quickly in transition, allowing Sears and Estrada to make it a one-on-one -on -one game instead of a five-on-five. -five. Shot clock is off. Bama has made five of its last seven. Florida, nine of its last 11. Remember Florida, one of the best offensive rebound teams in the country, get it up quick enough to lie yourself to clean up the miss. Got to go now. Here's Pullen. Lost it, got it back, taken away by Walters, and that's how the half will end. They did everything you asked them to do in the first half. What's your assessment? I agree. Now we just need to do it in the second half. I thought we did a really good job defending the three-point line. Obviously, their first make came in the, with about a minute to go. So we were defending with a lot of toughness, both physically and mentally, doing a great job on the scout, not letting their shooters get them up, and doing, doing a great job keeping Sears and Estrada to their right hand for the most part. Appreciate your time. Yeah, Thanks, thanks coach. coach. Guys. Good finish for both offenses trying to pick it up after a slow start. 44-35 our score at the break. Marty, what'd you learn from Nate Oates? Tommy, I just talked to Coach Oates, uh, Coach Oates as he exited the locker room, and he just looked at me and said, we're too soft. If we want to play our game and win this game, it's all about toughness over this last 20 minutes for the Crimson Tide. Well, working in their favor tonight is the fact that Florida four times in conference games has allowed 50 points or more in the second half. Kentucky did it to them, Ole Miss, Georgia, and South Carolina just this weekend. Alabama held to 35 in the first half. They're held to just 74 in their loss to Tennessee this weekend. Diabate with his second personal. By the way, there are two more games against both LSU here at home and against Missouri with the allowed 46. So they are susceptible to not bringing the defense out of the locker room. Well, and that cannot, that cannot happen in the second half. Alabama, the best offensive team in the country, averaging 91 points. A great barometer, Tom, when you're playing Alabama. Are you ready or not? Do you take away their airspace, and do you guard the ball? And Florida was really good in those two areas in the first 20 minutes. It has to continue in the second half. Here's Muhammad Diabate with the baseline drive. It's turned around by Samuel. Nelson offering the screen for Sears. The bounce to him, and the extra pass is turned over. Gators the other way, and Richard rolls it home. That was a very difficult finish by Richard because he had a, a heated defender right in front of him and one trail of the play as well. Estrada with a spin move and comes up empty. Florida leading by 12. This feels like danger zone in the first minute of the second half. And a missed opportunity for the Gators, and then the foul will be the third on Micah Hanlogton. Now the defense by Florida, attentive, and you're trying to pass in a crowded situation was Nelson. Watch this finish by Richard again. One, one defender, one hot defender comes right in front of him, and another one right from behind. That is really well done by Will Richard. Seven steals in this game for the Florida defense, and a bounce inside to Nelson who draws the whistle. Preseason first team off conference coming out of the Summit League in North Dakota State. It was North Dakota Mr. Basketball playing at Devil's Lake High School. Calmly sinks them both. He's into double figures. I thought it's going to be difficult for Alabama to come back and win this game if they can't get off 14 or 15 three-point shots in the second half. They were held to 10 in the first half, and that number has to grow if they got a shot in this game. Only been held to fewer than 25 nine times this season. That was a goal for Todd Golden. The shot fade away, pulling off one foot's got a half dozen. So good. If you're guarding this league and you can't play through contact, you can't score. Really well done by Pullen. Sears sneaks it in. He's got six. Again, just the one-on-one -on -one game by Alabama guards in their initial push. I mean, a real concern for Florida right now in this game. I know they got the lead, but can you stay in front of Estrada and Sears going forward? I'm curious if that one-on-one -on -one game can eventually open up some of those threes that you're talking about. Yeah. That's Poland. Absolutely it will. It's 
Alabama thrives off of how quickly can they get a paint touch. No touch yet on this possession. Here's Estrada. Blindly throws it up and sneaks it in. Yeah, but did not get a paint touch until 13 seconds on the shot clock. You'll take that if you're Florida defensively. Estrada's great. He finishes 65% at the rim. And on the other side, Diabate commits his third personal. Um, you've got to keep your hips square when you're playing Alabama. You cannot give these guards an angle because they will foot fake. And although they're left-handed, they are also very good and clever going right and finishing with their left, as an example by Estrada. So here's Zion pulling at the free throw line, making his 98th career start tonight. A couple of big subs waiting to check in for Bama. One more coming for Poland, Marty. Guys, I talked to Zion pulling at shoot around today, and he told me playing against a great player like Mark Sears, and he stopped and said, he's a great player. It only makes me lock in more. He said, tonight's really important for us. We have to get back on track, send these seniors out properly. This is a sold out game, and there's so much at stake in terms of the goals we've set. We need to embrace this night because it's really the last one for a lot of us. Yeah. He was honored, got his framed jersey before the game today on senior night one of six active players in college basketball whoa sears is getting going now well condon was late and not enough urgency to recover to sears richard can't answer sears has him retreating now Layton tried to rip it away there's a paint touch see if that helps griffin Now Sears got a half step and no good on the layup. Here's Samuel and a strong move for the transfer from Seton Hall. Yeah, it just goes right through the true freshman Stevenson. Double team doesn't come. Isolation ball by Todd Golden with Samuels effective. Layton tried to body Estrada, picked up his dribble. Now Griffin. And a whistle on that drive, and it will be charged to Zion Pullen, his first. Tom Sears puts fouls on the defense as well as any guard in this league. And if he gets going downhill, and this Alabama offense really starts clicking, then you cannot late close out and lack of urgency to Sears as a three-point shooter. He's too good, and he's got to heat up right now with 16 to go, and he's more than capable of this kid with the ball. Looking at Clayton this time. Kick out to Stevens, and, and that's off the mark. Alabama just two for 12 from three. Here's Condon. Got Sears on him. There's the mismatch. Samuel stepped through his elbow, really caught good. him off the jaw. Pringle goes down. Samuel was fouled and a chance for a three-point play, but on the clear out, the elbow caught him right on the chin. Tom, watch for the pass. It leads Samuels right to the right side of the glass. The pass is what he scores before he catches it because of where the ball was placed. Man, that's a shot, right? By Samuel. So the previous play is under review. Tom, they went to the monitor to look at this play right here. The, the bringing the ball through movement by Samuel, you got to check because there's contact above the shoulder area. But that is a legal basketball move. Chance to finish it off. Florida has scored on seven of its eight possessions this half. What a weapon Tyree Samuel has been for this Florida team. Meanwhile, Gators really shutting down Bama from behind the arc, as we mentioned in their first matchup. They held Alabama to 8 of 32 from deep. That was a game that ended up going overtime. Bama won it two weeks ago. Shot clock is late again. Walters turn in the corner. Working on Samuel. Got the block. Shot clock at 5. That one hit the rim. Nelson with the follow. 12 for Nelson. 
talk about Alabama need to get it going offensively. Florida has done whatever it's wanted here in the second half on the offensive end. Samuel deep. Follow tip, no, and then Condon caught an elbow and got whistled for the foul. Nelson ended up on the ground. Todd Golden does the same. He is in disbelief. <laughs> well, I think Todd Golden saw it, that his guy got elbowed, and the guy that delivered the elbow then fell to the ground. Todd's, Todd Golden is saying, I, I want you to look at this. And there's the tap that doesn't go. And, and Nelson, before he secured the ball, does Nelson get that left elbow out? And we pause and take a look. The previous play is under review. By the way, it's Alex Condon who got whistled for a foul in the previous matchup with Muhammad Wagi delivered a forearm shiver that would get a suspension for the Bama Center later but wasn't called or caught during the game. This is what happened two weeks ago. The scrum underneath, Khan ended up diving for the floor. Wagi, watch this. After review, we have a common foul as called on the floor. It's going to be Alabama basketball. So nothing additional, nothing flagrant on the elbow to Condon. Certainly wasn't anything towards the face or above the shoulders, which is nearly automatic these days. Strato with a high dribble. Here's Walters. And hacked down on by Pullen, which will be Zion Pullen's second personal. The foul trouble continues to mount for Florida. That's their fifth team foul. That is a beautiful defensive job by Florida so far. They just need to defend without fouling. Sears able to get to the rim. He is the prototypical NATO's player. 50% of his shots come at the rim. 43 come from three. That leaves only a handful that he ends up taking in what Bamba refers to as no man's land between the rim and the three. If you can back off Samuels like that, use him as a screener. And Clayton rejects the screen, absolutely. That's an empty corner, naked action for Clayton to operate off of. Nelson forgot the basketball. Here comes Florida the other way. Gators leading by 12. And Nelson commits a foul 30 feet from the basket. That's his second. Watch Clayton reject this screen. The corner is empty below him. And this ball screen is set by four and white. Look at that corner empty. And you've got to make Clayton use the screen if you're at Estrada. You've got to talk it through from the back line and force him into the screen, into the screen. You don't do it, and you give up an easy one, a straight line drive for Clayton to work off of. I'm hearing Nate Oates' words in my head that he said to Marty coming out of the locker room, we're too soft. They haven't lost two in a row since before Christmas when they dropped three straight to Purdue, Creighton, and Arizona, respectively. Florida's brought the fight tonight. Here's Condon, left wide open. Got it. Can he spin it for a big kid, Condon? He's going to be an all-league player maybe as soon as next year. And a tripping foul to Pringle. Third on Nick Pringle. Condon comes in. Only 30% from the three-point line in conference play. But you watch this, Lee. Watch the spin of this basketball. I mean, he lines it up and... You cannot spin it and shoot it any better for a 6'11 kid that Condon is. What a future. Front line, a rugged, skilled group that Todd Golden has to work with. Condon, 6'11 freshman from Perth, Australia. Fouls piling up for Bama, and now it's another on Nelson, which is his third. So Pringle on the bench. For a moment, Diabate sitting next to him, and Sears has really had a hard time finding his rhythm and getting those shots off. He switches off on Poland. Poland for three. And Estrada lost the handle on it, stays with the Gators. The previous shot clock situation is under review. This league is just is taking a backseat to nobody this year. Those are the five teams in the top 17 right now. All five of those teams are good enough to get to the Sweet 16, if not beyond. Beautiful save on the baseline from Hauk, but it ends up in Bama's hands. 
Three on three for Alabama. And another turnover? No, beat off of Florida. I'm just curious. We look at those schedules that these teams have played in this league. Ten different teams have been ranked in the top 25. What about the cumulative effect of going at big game after big game within a week upon week upon week? But it, it can wear you down a little bit. It can also prepare you for a national championship or a Final Four run. Yeah, I think that's what the SEC coaches are banking on because of the different styles that they face in this league. That was the fourth on Grant Nelson. It occurred when Hauk and Condon collided underneath, and it'll put Alex Condon at the free throw line and send Nelson to the bench. Rebounded by Bama. We know this about Alabama. They can go on a 10-0 run over a course of 90 seconds or two minutes as good as anybody in college basketball, not just this league. Augie with a hand off to Sears. Took Sears 19 minutes to get his first field goal attempt up. The Abate no. Hauk with the board, a push ahead. Here's Clayton. Got the whistle and got the roll. Why would he grab the rim? Cost his teammate a bucket. Such an aggressive, forceful driver is Clayton. And he takes the hit right there and the whistle blows. You got to leave it alone. You appreciate Condon running with hustle and effort. But the whistle was blown right there. Condon had to hear it. Got to leave that thing alone. Leave the rim alone. Ball's got to get through the net and clear it to be considered a made bucket. 63-48, Florida with the lead. And Meshack was a monster in that game. Another one coming for Clayton. Marty, you were hanging around the Alabama huddle. What'd you hear? Yeah, Nate Oates super frustrated with his guys for all the transition buckets that they're giving up here to Florida. He looked at him and said, wham! He slammed his whiteboard and said, this isn't easy. Winning a championship isn't easy. We have 13 minutes left. We have to play so hard and we have to get tougher, tougher, tougher. 15 of Florida's 65 points have come in transition. I mean, Sears right now, you look at him, he's one of the five finalists for the Bob Cousy Award, but this is a tough, tough drive, just refusing to be stopped before he gets to the rim and plays right through the chest. But he's right there with Tristan Newton from UConn, who I love, Tyler Kolick from Marquette, who's out right now with an injury. Jamal Shedd, man, there's not a better point guard on both ends of the floor right now than that kid from Houston. Braden Smith at Purdue. Those are your five finalists for the Cousy Award. And Sears right there with the best of the best in the country. Sears knocks them both down. It's a 15-point game. His free throws snap a 7-0 Florida run. Clayton too strong. And a takeaway for Everdeen. There's nothing tough about that pass by Alabama. Just a lazy, careless, non-winning play. And then Estrada gets up an early three. Empty possession for the tie. They have scored in three minutes now. Denzel Abney with a huge two-hand jam. Looking for Condon. Now it's Howell. Got that paint touch. Oh, wow, wow! Lil Massé from Alex Condon. And a three-point try. Florida's starting to cook. That's just a careless pass that Aberdeen just eats up. And then watch this pass, big to big. How can do a good job with the ball fake to the right, delivers it to the left. And, and that's an athletic kid, Condon. And he had 10 offensive rebounds at Ole Miss early this year, the most by a Gator this century, which is a long time. But... I, the future of this kid, I'm, I'm telling you, he will be an all-SEC player next year. It was the most by a Florida freshman since somebody named Horford against Alabama back yeah. in 2005. That guy's still playing, by the way. 20-point Florida lead. Did not have this on my bingo card. They know it's screaming instructions at his team. Sears down the paint and one. 
And Mark Sears doing all he can to keep Alabama with some life. And his middle third drives, once that game becomes one-on-one, -on -one, hand help will not keep Sears from getting down the pipe. You have to full body help on this guy. And Florida doing a good job of making this kid work. He was against scoring, going to his right. Just sometimes guys make great plays. Pat him on the butt, backside, keep going. Jimmy, Mark Sears is scoring 24 points a game against quad one opponents. What's the difference in Mark Sears this year versus last year? Where did the growth came when it became his team? Yeah, his voice, first of all. I mean, every practice I've been through this year, look at him barking out instructions right now defensively. You know, very confident, tough, just a bulldog of a competitor. Talking about one in red right here. And Dalton Connect is going to be the SEC Player of the Year, but Sears has been nipping at his heels along with Antonio Reeves over the last two or three weeks. Florida gets a long rebound. Clayton steps through. And here's Sears coming out of there with it. Full steam ahead. And he throws on the brakes. Got into Aberdeen. It's been the Mark Sears show. All Alabama can lean on this half. Stevenson off the mark. Florida is outscored Bama 26 to 18 out of the locker room, and Riley Kugel will be going to the free throw line. I asked him what kind of leader he is. He said, I lead by example. I set the tone that everybody else follows on this team, and I want to be the voice that they listen to and that they respect because I've been there and done it. Yeah, Mark, I actually got to watch film with Alabama a couple of weeks ago, and Mark, Mark Sears asked some really high-level questions in that film session about what are we doing defensively on a scout and, and made a correction on a, on a play. The, those kind of guys, they fix the problem before the coach has to fix the problem. That's been another area of growth for Mark Sears this year. Sears for three from the top of the key. He's one of the four of the top five scorers in the SEC started their college careers at lower level schools, including Sears. Wow. Cole drills it. What a really good find by Riley Kugel. And Pullen finds that weak side as Kugel drives. He's going to get three, maybe four red jerseys to swarm the ball. The Kugel tough enough and athletic enough. Yeah, four red jerseys finds Pullen on the back side. Man, Florida Gators are cooking. Florida's huddle extremely spirited. In that last break, Todd Golden came into the huddle and looked at his guys and said, do not let up. Clean rebounds and run them, run them. Do not let them off the hook. Oh, that is an aggressive mindset, Marty. And Jimmy, it's been an aggressive mindset since we showed up at the gym today for Florida shoot around. How quick the foul, that's his third. Well, I love what, what Todd told his guys at two o'clock. Hey, turn it up. We're at home, turn it up and be the aggressor the entire night. Probably feeling like Alabama was emotionally going to be tired, maybe physically tired. Those guards, right? Uh, Estrada and Sears have played a ton of minutes the last two or three weeks. And Todd Golden is right. All gas, no brakes right now with 9.33 to go and close this thing out. Last year became the first Florida head coach in 49 years with a pair of top 25 wins in his inaugural season. And he's trying to put together a monster win. Florida's last 20-point win against a top 25 opponent came in January of 21 against number six, Tennessee. Estrada, great effort. I'm sure he's okay. Went down awkwardly. Florida's outscored Alabama by nine in the second half. Clayton tracks it down behind the back save. And now Pullen on his way in. Empty possession for the Gators. Plenty of time left in this game. Alabama, the, the number one offensive team in the country, and scoring bunches in a flurry. Taken off the rim by Condon. Gators have five and double figures tonight. And so Aberdeen's getting some good run this evening. Averages less than 10 minutes a game. Three off the mark from Howe. 
and lost it with under 10 seconds to play and then turn it over for the 19th time in their final possession. They need a comeback win in a big way. Kansas lost its last home game against BYU on Monday night. It's a wedge, turns into a jump ball, one stuck for long, but it counts, and the possession arrow will keep it this way. There's three official colors you can have for a college basketball, according to the Panton matching system. You can have orange 151, red orange 173, or brown 1535. Why is that? I, I, well, first of all, this is obviously orange Panton 151. That's what we're playing with tonight. Can we you not say? get a standard size ball and a standard color? Oh, Jimmy, then you're going to have to have everybody use the same equipment manufacturer. We got too much money tied up into swooshes and stripes and all that stuff. Uh, first of all, I think the word is Pantone. What did I say? Uh, Pantone. I think that's a city that's the in French Chile version. somewhere. Uh, and also, to Tom's point, as Will Richard has another run out for the Gators to run it to almost a 20-point lead here in Gainesville. Also, uh, to Tom's point, Disney will pay for the Wi-Fi, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Three on two for Richard, and he gets fouled by Nelson, and that'll bring a premature end to Grant Nelson's night. Of course, that Ohio State team lost in the national finals to Billy Donovan's Florida team, which is on its way to its second consecutive title. Another one coming for Will Richard. What a game he's had tonight. He came in averaging 11 points a game. He's got 18 now. Time you walk in here. I, I do when I walk in here. I, I think back on the Billy Donovan days and we're at Billy Donovan Court. And the last repeat national champion came right out of Gainesville. And I, I will not be shocked at all if UConn doesn't win it again this year. They, how complex their offense is and how clean they run it is at an entire another level. They've got a ruggedness and an edge about him and a fight about him, all led by Coach Hurley that shows up every single night. And they, they are the favorites to me. Everyone chasing UConn when that bracket comes out. Klingon's starting to play like we thought he would all year long. Now that he's finally healthy. And, and Tristan Newton, we already said, he's one of my top five players in college basketball this year. On the best team, he's a leader scorer rebounder and assist just having a fabulous year is Tristan Newton. Condon replaces hand locks and has got four personal fouls. I gave you the choice to either take UConn, let's just say the top three seeds and the field, where would you lean? I would take the top three. I would take, you, you give me UConn, Purdue, and, and either Houston or Tennessee. I, I, I'm good with those three right there. And history tells us the value of being a one or a two seed when it comes to cutting down the nets. Obviously in your favor. 21 point Florida lead over Bama. Clayton can't finish. They said it was a foul on Nelson a few moments ago. It was obviously changed. He's still in the game. And Sears gets Condon to commit his fourth. Sun square off against the Celtics on ABC and it's UFC 299 in Miami. Duke trending up in the, at the right time right now. I, I, I still love North Carolina. I mentioned Tristan Newton, RJ Davis to me is also deserving of one of my top five guys in college ball this year. That little kid has been just fantastic. And he won 62 Florida Gators. Plus 10 over Bama in the second half. Samuels goes right by Nelson. And that will be the fifth on Grant Nelson. The combination of speed and power of Tyree Samuel. Tom, it's hard to guard. He catches this ball, a little bit of a ball fake, and then right, that's in slow motion. That's a very quick, powerful move by Tyree Samuel just not near enough fight back by Grant Nelson. And those are the type of plays that Nato will talk about with his team again. Are we tough enough in games, hard games in March? They have to take another step or two in that direction if they're going to be a serious threat to get to that second weekend in the NCAA tournament. So Samuel to the free throw line. Started his college career at Seton Hall. Made 36 starts over four years there. Nelson will 
sit for the final 623. Tyree Samuel, 6'10, 239. He is a handful. Bama just two for 18 from three in this one. Estrada. Again, the slide of hand is sneaking past Samuel. Isn't he good for a left handed kid going right and finishing back underneath his left paw? But the key number in this game, Alabama has only gotten off 18 three point shots. They average taking 32. That's how good Florida's defense has been on that three point line in high. The lob to Samuel. Wow. The shot says, I didn't touch him, but Samuel's getting ready to throw it down right on his head. Boy, he is becoming a fantastic roll threat. We saw him Saturday at South Carolina roll out of that middle ball screen action and actually shoot floaters like a six-foot guard. And he takes one three-point shot per game. If he makes it, he can take another one. If he misses it, he just gets right back to who he is. But he is a force along that front line. He's made 70% of his shots at the rim, 40% on two-point jumpers, and that was a concern for Florida in their first matchup with Bama. Constantly gave Samuel those looks, and over the last four, he's made everything pay off, averaging nearly 18 and seven. The biggest area that he has to improve on, only 53% is a free throw shooter. You want him on the floor to close out games, and man, he's a liability right now in close games because of Sears guides it in from the corner. He's got 21. He's got a text. Any more fun facts about the basketball? Yeah, what else we got? I I've got one. It's recommended. It's only recommended that the home team provide the visiting team with a warm-up ball that is the same type as the game ball. It's not required. It's recommended. So if you're going to play with a, a Nike, you can get away with it by having the visitors warm up with a Wilson. Go at it. <laughs> what about the Does that rock? make any they sense? Roll? No, it doesn't make any sense. Just change the word to required. But if you're required to provide one for warm ups, then some teams would only provide one. <laughs> it's got to be the same ball that you're going to play with, though, is my point. You would think. <laughs> Sears transition three. Yeah. And he buries out. He's hard to put away. It's down to a 15 point game. I know there's only five minutes left, but Florida has to keep playing. Sears has scored the last six of this game. Holland spins his way in to draw the foul. Sears is as good as anybody in transition, but Florida today has been the team that has ran out time and time again. Those transition points heavily favor Florida in this game. Last time I checked it, like 20, 23 to 6, but Florida is fast. They're, they're not as fast as Alabama. Alabama's third in the country in terms of the number of shots they get up within the first 10 seconds. Cornell and Western Kentucky lead all of college basketball, but Florida very comfortable, very confident, especially at home playing a NASCAR pace. Speaking of NASCAR, Marty's a NASCAR guy. Figured out there's one way you can slow him down when he's in his rental car, like today in Gainesville. If you're the gate attendant, you close the gate on the rental car as he's trying to squeeze that's, through. That's Marty. what happened to Marty. Let's run better between the tackles, buddy. Yeah, we might be making a trip to Mako. <laughs> we, uh, we had a little bit of a run-in with that, that huge black gate uh, when it was supposed to open we accidentally hit close, and there's students everywhere. There's other vehicles. Free throw's good, by the way. Raise hell, praise Dale, boys. <laughs> 26 now for Sears. <laughs> well, Alabama, to me, I thought they looked tired in the shoot-around today, and they have not played with a ton of energy. But this is all about Florida. I continue to think that Florida built to be a second weekend team. I mean, what do you not like about them? They've, they've tightened up their defense as the year's gone on. They got fantastic guard play. Their bigs are big, strong, tough, good. They control the glass. They got shooters like Will Richard. I mean, the, to me, the, Florida is the real deal. They're so close to being a 24-win team. They've lost four one-possession games, and they are going to be a problem in Nashville and beyond.
Rylan Griffin injured his lower leg on that collision near the sideline. Nate Oates is losing his mind. They have to pull Oates back. This was the collision. No foul was whistled on the play. Tom, that is a ton of contact. When, when three bodies come colliding together as hard as that is, I mean, Griffin can't put any weight at all on that right leg. After review, both guys were going for a loose ball. Ball went out of bounds. Call on the floor stands. It'll be Florida ball on the sideline. Florida with a 90 to 72 lead. Walter Clinton Jr. at the free throw line. Nate Oates got teed up because of that outburst, we're told. They reviewed, as you heard going to break, they reviewed that previous play and added nothing to it. Tom is a loose ball situation and even in the rule book, it says that some incidental contact can be pretty severe. And that was a severe collision going for a loose ball. But in the official's judgment, no, no one had an advantage, gained an advantage, disadvantage. And, and Griffin gets knocked to the floor and was helped off. But Nate Oates saw it differently, gets teed up. Jimmy, I, I think the words you just used there, whether it applies 100% to that last play, is something that fans wrestle with, and that is advantage disadvantage and that is something that officials use every game you see incidental contact that's 30 feet from the basket did it impact the play yes or no they're going to let him play on more often yeah that's it and you don't see that type of play very often but it's very clear in the rule book that those type plays will happen with 10 guys on a floor and especially in a loose ball scramble like that there will be some hard contact and some collisions that was the fourth on diabate pringle also has four and Nelson has already fouled out. Another one coming from Micah Hanlogton, sophomore from Lake Norman, North Carolina. Started his college career playing at Marshall. And before he was a member of the Thunder and Bird program, he's a great high school lacrosse player at 7-1. Out of bounds off of Alabama. Back in the late 80s, early 90s, and a timeout taken by Todd Golden. They couldn't get the ball in. Welcome back to Gainesville. A little give and go for Walter Clayton Jr. He'll peel out. Clayton and Will Rich are both with 20 point games for the Gators. A turnover leads to an Alabama run out. Diabate, no. Pringle, yeah. Tom, what I, what I appreciate about Walter Clayton's game tonight, he's been to the free throw line 12 times. He has drawn seven fouls as the Florida guard. And, uh, he and Pullen. They are a tough combination. They both transferred in here, and it doesn't always work out. Todd Golden, he struck it really, really well, bringing in guys with character that want to win. Did you think if you would have said he struck gold, it would have been repetitive? Is that what happened? Just a little bit. That's why yeah. I avoided it. Here's pulling at the free throw line. He was at UC Riverside, one of six active players in college basketball, over 1,500 points. 500 rebounds, 500 assists. What a job by Todd Golden and his staff. And, and think about Zion Pullen as well. Last year at UC Riverside, he led the nation scoring right at 10 points a game off pick and roll action. So we talk a lot about Clayton, but this Pullen kid, very underrated and very valuable to a Florida team that's about to put 100 on Alabama. Jimmy, I think you just hit on something that's a huge advantage for coaches these days when it comes to recruiting. Instead of guessing how a high school player's game may translate, say, to the SEC, sure. they can go back and they can study the numbers and they can watch the film and they can say, you know what, we need a lead guard that can run the pick and roll efficiently and effectively. Let's go get Pullen from UC Riverside. And they, and they didn't get him until June. I mean, he was as big of a pickup as anybody late in that transfer portal because Florida was without a true point guard and Zion Poland stepped right in has had a great voice from day one but he can really stretch you out as a ball screen guard I, I'm just all in on Florida a phenomenal passer he's going to set the assist single season record 
passing uh, Chris Chioza, who was phenomenal. Montgomery and Nemhart, all those guys, really good at that lead guard, but none have had a better single season than what this kid has had. Gators about to hang 100 on Alabama. And that continues a disappointing trend. In their nine losses, the opposition is averaging 92 points a game. That number is going to rise. Foul inside, 95-76. Here's Tyree Samuel at the free throw line. Tom, think about that SEC tournament next week in Nashville. I mean, normally I go into that week thinking there's three or four teams that legitimately could win it, not this year. Those top six or seven, they all go to Nashville thinking we can cut down the nets, and I, I would agree with them. Tennessee still bearing down on a potential one seed, I think they should be right now. They're closing out the regular season with four straight games against teams ranked inside the top 25. They'll be playing for a one seed in the NCAA tournament. Kentucky, Auburn, Alabama, for all of them have a chance to improve their seed mark. I go pop the top on that one. By the way, the SEC tournament gets going Wednesday night with a doubleheader on SEC Network. Florida with a chance to play their way into a top four seed in a double bye. And we got a foul inside of Pringle. He'll foul out at this point. Nate Oaks can't wait to get on the plane. Let's get back to T-Town. Uh, Florida was ready. They were ready at 2 o'clock. They've been ready ever since they lost in overtime at Tuscaloosa a couple of weeks ago. They've had this one circled. And they delivered. And sometimes it's very important when you catch a team and they caught Alabama at a good time coming off of that Saturday night emotional loss game day is just draining on you it was interesting right we talked with Todd Golden shoot around today said all the texts came in from my buddies and they said oh man I wish Alabama would have won maybe they'd sleepwalk on the way in here he said no this is exactly how we want it get them in our building be aggressive and they're gonna run Alabama that's first back-to-back -back losses this calendar year uh, and they don't will talk about it again he's been very transparent with all of us and his team defensively right now they they're just not good enough maybe win the sec tournament or get to that second weekend uh, offensively no question they can score with anybody in the college game but they have got to get a ruggedness and an edge about them. They showed it at times against Tennessee, not for full 40, but they did show it at times against Tennessee. Nato has something on film that he can hold his guys accountable to, which he will. It'll be the second time in the last four games that Alabama has given up 100. Third time Gators will make it to the century mark this year. They did it against Michigan and Georgia. Walters is fouled out. And Nate Oates is going to take the opportunity to squeeze a timeout out of this personnel replacement. They do a great job of boxing off. They keep the game simple and clean, but they are rugged. Two of the most physical teams in college basketball going out tomorrow night in the Colonial Life Arena. It, it was hot on Saturday when yeah. Florida was there. It will go to an entire another level in Lamont Paris' second year tomorrow night. That will be must-watch TV for all of college basketball. Think about this. The team picked dead last. Yep. Dead last is playing the team picked first for the SEC regular season title tomorrow night. How uncommon is that? And South Carolina picked dead last because they were dead last last season, trying to go worst to first. And a fun conversation with Lamont. Friday night in the practice gym, Old Carolina Coliseum, and he said, you know, I told our guys after media day, there's only two reasons that the pundits pick a team last. It's either because they think the coach stinks or the players stink. He said, folks, I don't stink. This is on you. On and he you. challenges guys in a big way. <laughs> By the way, what, what a half for Mark Sears. He's got 33 points now in this game. He had four at the break. Hasn't been enough. He's been a, a one-man band. And that's not going to beat a good team. Alabama, again, they, they've only taken 21 three-point shots in this game. Coaches know. We asked Todd Golden, what's the, what's the golden number tonight in terms of 
three-point attempts that you want Alabama to take. He said 25 or less. Here's Nick Pringle at the free throw line. It's 53% of the season. Gators have really turned the faucet off from behind the arc. Two weeks ago, 8 of 32 from deep. Tonight, 5 of 21. This is a Bama team. It's one of the best in the country from deep. They're making 11, 11 and a half threes per game. And, and tip the hat to Florida's defense. Alabama came in the number one offensive efficiency team in the country, scoring basically 128 points per every 100 possession. That's yep. a high, high number. Touch pass for a corner three. And Sears gets it back. Away. We will get you to Allen Fieldhouse as soon as we finish here, but one of the reasons this game has drawn on like this is that Florida has been to the free throw line 44 times in this game. They 38 of them. The last time making 35 or more was 2017 against Auburn. And another foul. That's charged to Sears. You double up teams from the free throw line in attempts. And Alabama has done tonight it is a concern for alabama defensively not just we've outlined already but they are 324th in the country in fouls committed per game on senior night tyree samuel out and todd golden will get a chance to get some of the other seniors in perhaps before this is done five on the board for Florida. They scored 106 against Michigan. That was all the way back in December 19th in a double overtime win. Hesitation move. We approach the one minute mark. Sears not going quietly, but it's rejected. Swatted by Condon. Rebound by Richard Bama gets Arkansas coming to Coleman Coliseum. Jimmy and I will be there for that one to start the day on Saturday following game day. And this Florida team goes to Nashville to take on Vanderbilt and try to finish the season strong. What a turnaround it's been for Todd Golden squad. Richard for three. Strata banks it in. Um, the depth of Florida, it, it's real depth. And Todd Golden doesn't put a bad player or a non-offensive player on the floor. He calls timeout to empty the bench and get guys in. And the seniors stroll off for the last time. It's an emotional time for guys like Pullen. Just does not turn it over, Pullen. So good and clean the ball. Like he averages one turnover per game. These plays. 36 37 minutes. Crowd wants Anderson to shoot. His teammates are telling him the same thing. His coach, on the other hand, says, We will take this one to the house. And boy, did they deliver. 105 87. Florida still in play for a top four seed in the SEC tournament. You know what? We've uh, been good in this building all year, and uh, our, our team has stepped up when the challenge was there and tonight was one of those moments obviously a great alabama team one of the best offenses in america but i just thought we were really tough tonight and i thought our guys did a great job of answering the call tonight and uh just playing with great toughness both physically and mentally for 40 minutes you told them this afternoon to turn it up that this was their house and they needed to make a statement what statement do you think was made Listen, I wish we played the rest of our games here this year, you know, and now we got to go on the road and get some neutral games. But, uh, no, again, the crowd's been amazing for us all year. Another sellout here tonight. And, uh, again, our guys have delivered. I'm really proud of our group tonight for sure.